I have to start on this. The bench top. So, a lot more drilling of dominoes, a lot more gluing and quite a bit more thicknessing. These, uh, these pieces of timber aren't actually um, aren't fully dressed and I left it that way because when you, some, when you cut timber, especially Australian hardwoods, there's stress within the planks of timber and they have a tendency to move and release those stresses once, um, once they're cut. So these have been hang, uh, just hanging around as is for the last two weeks and now we're, uh, we're good to go. So that's the next job. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and just clarify a couple of things. Um, the workbench build, well this video is a little bit disjointed because um, while I was building the base, I was also preparing, milling, dimensioning and um, gluing up the timber for the workbench top. And the thing is, is mate, that's, the video would be as boring as bat guano, honestly. It was basically doing the exact same thing as I did with the legs. So I decided I'll just concentrate on the, uh, on the interesting bits. Um, so what I've been, what I did was while I was building the workbench base and it was getting to a point where it was almost finished and um, you know, it was getting sanded down and having, um, having a finish rubbed on it and all of those kinds of things, I was working on building my workbench top. Um, and really building that was the exact same methods as I used for laminating the legs up for the base. So there wasn't really much of a reason to film it. It was basically, again, just cutting dominoes, fitting dominoes, gluing, clamping, and doing it all over and all over again. So this is why this video is just a little bit disjointed. My apologies for that. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, give that uh, like button a touch up for me and um, enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. Now you can watch me try and lift a really heavy large lump of timber made out of 16 pieces of 100 by 50 millimeter Tassie oak on top of my workbench. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Okay. Let's get to it. Okay, this is the result of my labour for the last three weeks. This bench top is, I don't know how big, I think it's roughly 1850 long by about 850 millimetres wide and it's sort of in the right place and everything. Um, we're actually looking at the bottom part of the, the bottom face of the workbench and from my glue up it's looking reasonably square um, it's high in the on the edges 
and low in the middle so it will need some uh, massaging to get it dead flat but it's um, pretty good off the bat this is without it being sanded in any in any way shape or form the um, the edges uh, well they're they're about a millimeter off being square so I've still got a, a lot of work to be done but at least um, at least now it's in a uh, position where I can actually start sanding and um, and working on it so my job now is to cut some bench dog holes well sorry excuse me sand him a lot flatter than it is cut some bench dog holes which will also double as lifting eyes because it was a lot of fun trying to lift the uh, bench up without them and then I have to flip it over do the same thing and then machine up the jarrah to make the, uh, the apron and the end caps for the vices. So, that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, I've now, with my track saw, cut at least halfway through the end of my bench, and it's looking fairly, well, it's looking neat, and the important thing is it's square to the long ends. It's square to this part here. I could only get halfway through my I could only get halfway through with my track saw uh, but that's okay because what I will do is I will now use a flush trim bit the router bit to flush this end up and it will be the same with this and everything will be sweet there I've gone ahead and measured and cut well measured and made sure my my dog holes are going to be in the right spot I also built up a really complex jig involving a plank of timber with a hole in the middle of it and that I will use to make sure that the dog holes are square to my bench and in the right place sometimes I think that people can go a little bit overboard and I, especially me can go very overboard with building uh, woodworking jigs um, when really sometimes the simplest method is the best and most reliable method so that's what I did with that all I got plank of timber 19 millimeter hole a few marking outlines and I can then work with that Alrighty, so now, time to cut the dog holes. quandary. I've spent weeks building this bench and it's living up to its name, yeah, living up to its design requirements. It's strong and it's beautiful in its simplicity. Um, I've laminated the, uh, the bench top together. I've sanded it down with a belt sander and it's fairly it's fairly flat however hmm however I've got a few more things to add to this bench top and I've been thinking about it for the last few uh, few days 
and I don't think it's going to be flat enough. There is my quandary. You see, the next job I would have to do is I would have to flatten this with a router sled and rails and get it as true as it can ever be. Now, the problem there is that I've never done that before and I could potentially ruin this bench top by doing it. And that leads to a, well, do a, a roughly risk assessments with, um, with all the work I do. Is the, is the work beneficial to the, um, to the, is the work beneficial to, to the outcome? To the uh, outcome of it? And if it's no, I don't think it is, not for the effort put in or the potential for disaster. Or, if it is beneficial to the outcome, I should do it. In this position, in this situation, there's the other thing. Is the work beneficial? Could it lead to disaster? And would that disaster totally stuff up the work I've done? Now, flattening a bench top is not an easy job. I've never done it before. So there is a potential for complete and utter catastrophe. But the benefits, if I get it right, outweighs the, outweighs the danger from getting it wrong. 